Prophet ﷺ continues to mention something. He says, The day of the war to run away without the instruction of the commander is a major sin. In fact, there is a verse of the Quran that tells that to us. At a time of war, when you are a warrior and you are going forth to fight the enemy, to run away or to turn back from that and without the instruction of the commander, you would actually be considered a person who engaged in a major sin. What happens to a believer when he is in a war zone and he has to fight on to protect the ummah or his people or whoever else it may be? One of two good things happen to him. Either there is victory on the ground, so we are victorious, or he is considered a martyr because he lost his life and he will get Jannah. Was there a loss? In actual fact, for a believer, there was no loss. The idea here is to strengthen the warriors, to tell them, you do not go back. Make sure you follow the instructions of the commander. You know the battle of Uhud. Some of the people did not follow the instruction of the Prophet ﷺ and they came down from a certain hillock where they were supposed to be guarding. And that caused a lot of destruction for the Muslims. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. And the last one from those seven that we will talk about today, it's in the hadith. Ijtanibu as sabah al mubiqat. Remember the term as sabah, it means the seven. Al mubiqat means those sins that are very detrimental and damaging against you in your deen, your dunya, your akhirah, in your life and the hereafter. The last one is qadv. Al-Muhsanat, Al-Mu'minat, Al-Ghafilat. To falsely accuse the believing females who are innocent of the sin you are accusing them of, primarily immorality. People today come out and say, that one is having an affair with this one, this one is having an affair. What did you see? You just saw them talking together. What else did you see? You saw one message on the phone. What else did you see? And you know how far your accusation went? Subhanallah. I'm not condoning messages on the phones, but I'm telling you, if the Prophet ﷺ says, be careful about accusing others of immorality, then you need to know it's a serious sin. It happened at the time of Rasulullah ﷺ, Surah An-Nur has in it verses that have clarified accusations against our mother Aisha radiallahu anha. That was not for nothing. Allah says, the one who started all of it, the main man who was behind the accusation against Aisha radiallahu anha, he will have a severe punishment. But more than that, everyone who spread the tale, everyone who enjoyed the gossip is going to be punished because of what they have done, what they have earned. So there are two things we need to know. Never accuse someone of something, especially when it comes to immorality, because false accusation is something major. And secondly, never become a person who enjoys gossip, because then you will be carrying tales. And when you carry tales, naturally, you will carry something that is wrong, and you will earn an equal portion of the sin based on what you have done. So that is the one hadith that speaks about the major sins or the sins that we have been warned about al muhlikat they will destroy you but before i end there is one more hadith that i must speak about because it only has three categories in it and already we have spoken about some of them the prophet ﷺ, one day he says ala unabbiukum bi akbar al kaba'ir it's a hadith of abi bakr radiyallahu anhu he says, should I not inform you of the biggest of sins? And so he said, Ashirku billahi. He started off with the same one that was in the previous hadith. Then he says, Uququl walidain. Subhanallah. What is the meaning of Uququl walidain? Well, the translation of it would include to be disrespectful or hurtful or abusive towards your parents. It does not mean obedience because obedience is confined to what is within what Allah has ordained. Which means if your parents are asking you to do something Allah has prohibited, you cannot 
obey them. Even if they say, you are now doing uquq, you will tell them, my father, this is not uquq. This is actually doing you a favor. I'm not going to buy your alcohol for you because Allah has disallowed that. Subhanallah. I'm just giving you an example. So be kind towards your parents. Be dutiful towards them. Speak to them in a respectful way, even when you disagree with them. Speak in a very beautiful way. Don't abuse them. It's the second sin from Akbarul Kabair. You need to memorize it and know it and talk about it because the new generations seem not to give a damn about their parents and the status of parents. And the last one, the Prophet ﷺ was lying down when he mentioned these two. Then he sat up. In one narration, his face changed. And he says, Allah wa qawlu zuri wa shahadatu zur. Allah wa qawlu zuri wa shahadatu zur. Allah wa qawlu zuri wa shahadatu zur. Do you know what that means? Behold, to utter that which is of false witness, that which is false and to bear false witness, to utter falsehoods and to bear false witness. Didn't we say earlier, one who bears false witness is engaging in a major sin when we accuse others. But this is more encompassing in that sometimes you are lying about something, whether it is in a court or not in a court. If it is in a court in front of the judge, it is even worse. But even if it is not there and you are bearing false witness, subhanallah, it is a major sin. The Sahaba say he kept repeating this, these words. Allah wa qawlu zuri wa shahadatu zur. He kept repeating them until we felt. We hope he keeps quiet now. فَمَا زَالَ يُكَرِّرُهَا حَتَّى قُلْنَا لَعَلَّهُ أَوْ لَيْتَهُ سَكَتَ لَيْتَهُ سَكَتَ He continued to repeat them until we felt. But we hope he keeps quiet. My brothers, my sisters, I end on this note to say, let us make sure we are always truthful. If you have lost something because of your truthfulness, Allah will replace it with a million things. And if you have gained something because of your falsehood, Allah will replace it with a million regrets that you may have. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us forgiveness and open our doors. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to abstain from sin. And to seek forgiveness all the time. For indeed, the one who is successful is the one who continues to seek the forgiveness of Allah. وَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا أَيُّهَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ And repent unto Allah, all of you, O believers, in order that you achieve truth.